everybody. Welcome to Law Doc Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell was really just to show that there's not one right way to homeschool. And we do that by bringing homeschoolers together from around the world each and every month to share their personal take on a specific topic. This month's topic is homeschool mom must-haves, and I am so, so excited for this topic because, well, I'm ready to add some things to my wish list because Mother's Day is coming up and I don't have anything on it yet. But I'm also excited for this topic because I feel like in a world where we are being sold to constantly, there is always things that we feel like we need that we really don't need. Um, I am super, super guilty of this. I like to call it shiny thing-itis, where you are, you know, scrolling or on Amazon or whatever, and you all of a sudden need all of the things because it's shiny and it's new and you just need to buy it. But I think sometimes we can forget how little you can effectively homeschool with. And I think sometimes having all of the things can be really overwhelming, at least for me personally. So while I really enjoy having tons of resources on hand, I wanted to share like must haves, the bare minimum things that I feel like I couldn't homeschool without. And then a few extra bonus things that I really, really enjoy having on hand. So if you're interested in seeing my top five homeschool must haves, like absolutely couldn't homeschool without them, stay tuned and then make sure you watch all the way to the end for a few bonus items. Now, the reason I really wanted to narrow this down to no more than five items was because I feel like as homeschool moms, especially, we feel like we need to have everything possible to homeschool our kids well. And if we don't have it, we feel like failures. I also feel like if you're a new homeschool mom coming into the homeschool world and you're looking at all these amazing resources, it can feel very overwhelming or even sometimes intimidating like oh, i can't homeschool because i don't have all of this i'm not going to be good at it because i can't afford all of this or whatever so i thought you know what i'm going to pick no more than five items that i must have that i couldn't homeschool without and that i think you can homeschool very successfully with just these so my number one topic the thing i absolutely cannot live without and it is top of my list for a very very good reason is a library card Yep, you heard me right, a library card. That is the one thing, the number one thing that I feel like most homeschoolers need. With my library card, I have access to almost any book I could ever want. Our library allows us to have 100 books out per card and each of us have a card. So that means we can have 300 books either on hold or out. Uh, we also have interlibrary loans so we can get books from other libraries. So that means for the most part, unless it's like a brand new release and there's a weight on it, we can pretty much get our hands on any book that we want. Our library also offers CDs and DVDs that you can check out. So that means even more resources at my fingertips. Our library has story times and classes and the librarians themselves, librarians themselves are a treasure trove of resources. So all of those things come with a library card as well. And then apps like Hoopla, and Overdrive or Libby, depending on what you call her, allow us to have eBooks and audiobooks at our fingertips using our library card for free. So all of those things are free with just a library card, which is amazing. And I know other libraries even offer um, games that you can get. I've seen some that now have like a topic based like backpacks and bags you can walk away with. That's basically a unit study in a bag. So make sure if you haven't yet to check out your library because there is so, so many things that come from that one place and with a library card that seriously can make homeschooling possible with just that. Now, my number two thing on my list is my laptop. Now, this is my personal laptop. I absolutely love it. I use it probably on a daily basis. We in our household actually have three laptops, but you could do it with just one. You don't need multiples. You just need some sort of device. It could even be a tablet or a desktop, whatever you have, but some kind of computer is definitely my number two because with this, I can search uh, curriculum. I can, you know, access digital curriculum. 
I can find freebies, I can create my own curriculum, I can stream videos from YouTube or any other streaming service that we have that would go along with whatever we're learning. I can Google answers to questions that I might not know yet. I mean, like literally the things that you have at your fingertips because of that are amazing. So definitely number two on my list is a laptop, but it could be, like I said, any kind of computer. Number three on my list, I did not bring out here because it's very heavy. So just pretend I'm holding a printer because with a computer and a printer, I can print off anything I want. Those freebies I was just talking about. Um, digital curriculum that you've bought or that you have created. In my case, normally it's created and you can print multiple different copies. So if you have three, four, five, six kids, you can print however many you need, making curriculum so much more affordable. One thing that I absolutely could not live without in our homeschool, and it really, really makes everything so much easier, are the grade level skills checklist that I have because I can go to whatever grade Emily is in, which this year it happens to be fifth, and I can start reading off the checklist that things that she needs to know. And it just gives me peace of mind knowing that, okay, we have you know evaluated works of literature through discussion, debate, and written critique. We have done varied range of poetic forms. Uh, we have plotted points on a coordinate grid. Like these are the things she needs to know in fifth grade and I can check off that we've known them or we've done them even if we haven't followed a specific curriculum. And so it really gives me peace of mind and I'm able to do that because I have a computer and a printer and I can just print them off and have them at my fingertips. Now, if you do not have these yet, I will link them in the description box. This is a free printable. Um, it has all language arts and math skills from varied sources. I put them together um, from preschool through eighth grade and then some suggestions for high school. So I will leave the link in the description box and you are free to grab them um, and use your own computer and printer to print them out. Um, also, maybe not necessarily a must have for all homeschools, but the next must haves on my personal list and I will explain why in just a moment are a laminator and you guys this was like the cheap cheapest laminator I could find at the time and it has lasted from even since Emily was in preschool so we're talking six years now so it doesn't have to be top of the line cheapest one you can find as long as it works just keep it and keep it going um, and then also this was my big homeschool splurge years ago and I'm so glad I did it it is the pro click binder um, it's super, super easy. I have a video showing how I use it. So I will link that up here in case you're interested. And then, I mean, you could just use regular scissors, but who has time for that? So some kind of trim or cutter machine, cause it is so much easier. And now the reason that those make my top list is because I had said before that you can find freebies or digital curriculum at better prices. I create 90% of everything we use in our homeschool. And because I have a computer and a printer, a laminator, a cutter, and a binder, it makes my life so much easier. We live an hour from civilization. So going somewhere to have something printed or laminated or bound is a pain in the behind and costly. So it saves me money and it means I can have things almost instantaneously. And it gives me the ability to print and bind things like my planner, which keeps me sane and on track and things like our curriculum, which basically means that we're ready to go. I personally just laminate our covers. Like this is just a piece of black cardstock for the back cover. And this is just a cover um, on cardstock laminated. So that's what I do for the covers, which is why I like the laminator in the um, cutter to make that happen. And then the pro click binding, one of the things I love, I have only bought spines one time and I've never re had to rebuy them because the spines open up and I can take the pages out when we're done, do whatever I'm gonna do with them for our portfolio and then reuse the spines for our next study. So again, it's very cost effective. Now, those are my top must haves. Those are the things that I could not live without. Like I can pretty much do 99.9% .9 of all of our homeschooling with those few things and internet service, obviously, because I would need that to be able to stream. But those are, those are it. I need a library card, I need a computer, I need a printer, my binder, my laminator and cutter, which again, you could just use scissors, but I really prefer that. 
Um, and then I could homeschool super effectively and efficiently with just those things. But there are a few things that make life just a little bit easier that I enjoy. And so I'm gonna share them as bonuses. Number one bonus is erasable pens. Now there are tons of different ones on the market. These are the Friction. Friction is my favorite brand. Um, and I prefer the Friction fine liners. They remind me of the Papermate felt, but these are erasable. So they're nice and bold, bright, but erasable. So when things don't go according to plan, which is like 75% of the time, maybe even 85% of the time, I can just erase it and write whatever we did do, or just erase it and draw a line through it because we didn't do anything, whatever. But it's super nice to have those. Not a necessity, but an extra bonus that I really, really appreciate. In addition to those, I really, really love our scrunch maps. We have had these again since we started homeschooling. This is a map of the world. They are very, very thin. They claim to be indestructible. I mean, they pretty much are. You can't really rip them. Most people just ball them up. It's, I mean, there's not really a lot that you could do. Um, maybe spill something on them. I mean, I haven't really tried to put them through the ringer, but I love that they are super small, not that expensive. We can shove them in our morning basket. We can take them with us when we travel. We can do just about anything with them. We've played games with them where she stood on them and jumped from one thing to another when she was younger. Um, they have been put through the ringer in our house and we have the US and the world. And like I said, I think they were less than $10 a piece. So for $20, we have a map that is pretty indestructible, takes up very little space. I mean, I could literally ball these up to fit in my hand. Um, I can shove them in my purse. I can take them in the car, travel, whatever. So they've just been really, really nice. They're great when you do a lot of things like read alouds for your geography because as we're reading books or as we're learning things, especially interest-based learning, um, we can tie in geography almost seamlessly because these are kind of always at our fingertips. So we're not doing, you know, specific geography maybe that day, but we're reading a book that references Spain or references, you know, the fact that they've gone from um, maybe Florida to Georgia or whatever. And it's just really easy and nice to have those on hand and be able to pull those out. Also a nice bonus, but definitely not a necessity are Kindles or some sort of e-reader. Um, Emily and I both have the same version of Kindle. I love them for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, because it is very small. Uh, it takes up hardly any room. They are amazing for when we're traveling. I remember we used to go on vacations and I would have like a whole entire separate bag for books. And now I just need these right here. And I don't run out of books because, well, I can just get more in the click of a button. Like I don't have to be like, oh man, we need to stop at a library or a bookstore. We ran out of books to read. And again, with that a library card that we already had as our must haves, I can get a ton of books as eBooks for free and they basically deliver to our Kindle. So I'm not normally buying books for it. Um, the investment was just the Kindle. And then, I mean, sometimes you have to wait for a book because there's a hold on it, especially if it's a really new or hot book, but you can read for free once you've made that investment. And again, you can read anywhere on the go. You can have, you know, numerous books at your fingertips without having to tote that heavy bag. Um, and I really, really like that it offers us the ability to read like in bed a little more comfortably. So we're not having to have uh, book lights or, you know, if she falls asleep or if I fall asleep, um, this, you know, in the bed isn't nearly as bad as a giant hardback with a light on it, at least in my experience, rolling over on that is a lot more painful than rolling over on a small Kindle. Um, you can make the font whatever size you want so that you don't have to wear glasses at bedtime, which for Emily and I both is an issue. So I like that we can do that. So there's just a lot of reasons why those are a great extra for our homeschool, but again, not a necessity. Um, it's just one of those things of convenience. And then the last thing that I really, really enjoy um, that has become something we use very, very frequently in our homeschool, but again, doesn't have to have, doesn't have to be a must have because there's other ways we can do this, um, is our HP sprocket. 
This gives us the ability to sync phones or cameras to it from Bluetooth and then print pictures on sticker paper. Um, we use this for journaling, for history timelines, for projects, um, tons of different things that has come in very handy. Again, this is convenience though, because technically speaking, you could use your top must haves, which were that computer and printer um, to print any pictures you wanted and then just use an old fashioned glue stick. I would work just as nicely. This is just a little bit more convenient, a little bit quicker. Um, and one of those things that did make my wish list at one point, uh, and after years of it being on there, I got it. And we use it a lot in our homeschool now that we have it. So those are my top picks, my top five must haves, and then a few extras in case you're looking to add some things maybe to your wish list or to have a few extra resources in your homeschool for convenience. Now I would love to hear your homeschool must haves, especially as a homeschool mom, what are the things that you cannot live without? The things that your homeschool would not run uh, smoothly without, or the things that your kids couldn't live without, the things that just bring the most joy into your homeschool. Please leave them down in the comments. I can't wait to read them.